showing others how to sew, number 73. Welcome back. Today, we'll be combining the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke to observe how Jesus trained others to sow the seeds of the Gospel. So let's dive in. Matthew 13 verses 18 to 23, Mark 4 verses 13 to 20, Luke 8 colon 9 11 15. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. Then Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? Now this is the meaning of the parable of the sower. The seed is the word of God. The farmer sows the word. Some are like the seeds along the path, where the word is sown. When anyone hears the message of the kingdom but does not understand it, because the devil, Satan, the evil one, comes and snatches away the word sown in their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. This is the seed sown along the path. Some are like seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he remains for only a season. In the time of testing, when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but as they go on their way, the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desire for other things choke the word. Their fruit does not mature and it becomes unfruitful. But the seed sown on good soil is the one who hears the word, these are those with a noble and good heart. They receive and cling to it. They understand it and by persevering, he indeed bears fruit and produces a crop thirtyfold, sixtyfold, or a hundredfold. My thoughts. Two blog posts ago I made the point that Jesus used simple stories to make disciples. This is my absolute favorite parable. It's a simple story with huge implications for ministry. I used to teach this parable with a focus on the soils. I think it certainly has application for identifying ourselves and others with the various soils but notice Jesus calls his story the parable of the sower. In other words, the emphasis is more on the messenger and the message than it is on the receivers of the seed. This makes perfect sense when we consider a few things. First, remember Jesus told his disciples at the very beginning that he would make them become fishers of men. Matthew 4 verse 19. He was training them in evangelism with this story. Secondly, he would, in a short time, be sending them out to do just what he promised and had been modeling for quite some time. Matthew 4 23, 9 35. Jesus put a lot of time and effort into training these men by setting the example. And lastly, this parable was mostly a lesson for them as sours of the seed, apparent from the context. Jesus was coaching them on what kind of reception they would receive when they entered the harvest fields. So why is this so significant? Well because we tend to see everything through a lens of self-improvement rather than ministry. It's a much more popular sermon when we ask the congregation which soil are you, rather than as you have shared the gospel this week, what soils did you encounter? The first question is challenging but the second is a preposterous expectation of the casual church attender. But if we are going to be like Jesus, we need to not only become fishers of men ourselves but teach others how to be fishers of men as well. As disciple-makers we are training others to share the word and become reproducing seed sours. My Story I was so proud of our church in the months of April and May. Instead of our regular meeting, we went to a local mall to share the gospel in the food court. We call this Church in the Harvest. Everyone in the church participated at one time or another. Everyone had a chance to share the gospel. When we gathered for the debrief at the end, they were so full of joy and excitement. Disclaimer, our church is pretty small but we always had more than 50% show up and usually there was someone new to train. We saw Jesus' parable in action as we encounter the various soils. And we had a lot of cool stories where God was obviously working in people's lives. But the coolest story happened on the last night. When two of our women shared with one gal she responded, this is the seventh time I've heard this story about Jesus this week. God is at work and so are his laborers in the harvest. Praise God! We are training our church to sow the seed and apparently, other churches are doing the same. Our Action Plan Now we'll look at some ideas on how to help us as disciple-makers train others to become sowers of the seed. Choose one simple way to present the gospel. See this video. Train everyone in your church how to share this simple gospel presentation. Take those you are discipling into the harvest and model this gospel presentation for them. 
If we are going to disciple like Jesus, we need to put a priority on training others to share the gospel. That's what he did.